So on a Magic 5 Pro Galaxy S23 Ultra, these are both super high-end flagships from two very different brands. Samsung is the big incumbent, the default choice for a lot of people buying an Android phone. Honor is more the plucky upstart, once part of Huawei, now trying to capture back some of the market share of its former parent company. The Honor flagship is quite a bit more affordable than Samsung's, but still not cheap by any means. So let's take a look at how these two compare and whether it's worth trying to save some money by going with Honor. I'm Alex Dobie, this is XDA TV. Let's get into it. So as much as the internal hardware here is quite similar, these are two very different phones. I'll say up front that I much prefer the ergonomics of the Magic 5 Pro. It still has the flattened sidewalls for easier grip, but the body itself is curvier and thus just more comfortable to hold onto. Samsung, on the other hand, has that classic Galaxy Note-inspired angular body. Same too with the dome-shaped camera bulge of the Magic 5 Pro. It's just more interesting to look at than the more minimalist back of the Galaxy, while also coming in more interesting colors and finishes. As we've seen from a lot of Honor and Huawei flagships, the curve of the display extends around all four corners of the screen, giving a more organic look and making the small chin area down below less conspicuous than Samsung's. Honor has a larger screen cutout up top. You could call it a dynamic island if you like, except it's not really dynamic, it's just kind of there. It obscures a bit more of the display, but I really don't mind it all that much. It also enables more advanced face unlocking capabilities similar to Apple's Face ID. That's as opposed to Samsung's, which just uses a single front facing camera. And it also brings one of my favorite features from the old Huawei days, the grab shot feature for taking screenshots. That's not to say I'm down on the S23 Ultra by comparison. Samsung's hardware remains excellent. It of course has the S Pen, a big reason why this phone is as sizable as it is. That stylus enables a whole host of software features that you won't find in the Honor. Check out our full review for more on those. And its in-screen fingerprint scanner is ultrasonic, not optical, meaning it can do its thing faster and without needing to light up your fingerprint. Both phones pack similar core internals based around Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, the same excellent, efficient processor you'll find in most Android flagships in 2023. Samsung has its own special 4Galaxy version of this chip that runs a little bit faster, but you're not going to notice that difference outside of benchmarking apps. And as for RAM and storage, both phones come with a base 8 plus 256GB. RAM can be expanded by a RAM booster option on both, which siphons off a chunk of internal storage to act as virtual memory. And no surprise, the impression of performance on both is pretty close. Both are extremely fast and performant, whether you're multitasking, gaming, or just general app wrangling. There are a couple of software differences around performance that are worth mentioning, though. Honor gives you more control over your refresh rate. There's a 90 Hz option that lets you save a bit of juice compared to going the whole hog at 120. That's a nice option to have considering the default dynamic refresh rate limits quite a few apps like Twitter to 60 Hz. On the Samsung side, I've already mentioned the light performance profile in a bunch of other videos that caps the speed of the high performance Cortex X3 to prioritize battery life and thermals. Another great option for saving a bit of battery power and boosting the already great longevity of this chip. Speaking of which, the spec similarities in these two phones means you won't see much difference in day-to-day -day battery life. A 5000 mAh battery plus Snap 8 Gen 2 means you can easily push past 6 or 7 hours of screen on time over a very heavy day's use, or comfortably get a second day if you're a lighter user. I feel like I could basically copy paste this into every review and comparison, but here we are in 2023, we truly are in the golden age of Android flagship battery life. Charging speeds are where Honor really pulls ahead though. No surprise given last year's Honor Magic 4 Pro debuted with insane 100 watt charging. The Magic 5 Pro takes a step back from these extreme charging speeds, though I'm willing to forgive this given the larger battery capacity. In any case, the 66 watt wired charging can get you three quarters of the way full in just half an hour. That's not the very quickest we've seen. The OnePlus 11 blows it out of the water with a full charge in about 26 minutes, but it's a lot faster than Samsung can manage. With a compatible 45 watt charger, you're looking at around an hour to go from dead to full with the Galaxy. Wireless charging is also quicker at up to 50 watts with Honor, though you'll need to buy the company's proprietary charging stand. Oh, and Honor also gives you a charger in the box, which really shouldn't be an added bonus, and yet here we are. Both phones feature excellent displays, which are very closely matched on paper, with 1750 nits of peak brightness on the Galaxy and 1800 on the Honor. On both models, you only really get this level of brightness when consuming HDR content, though. Nevertheless, both performed admirably in daylight, though Honor seemed a little bit more conservative when ramping up brightness levels under direct sunlight. So when it comes to software, Honor inherited Huawei's EMUI code when it split from its old parent company, and that's been transformed into Magic OS over the past few years. But as much as some of the visuals have changed and the performance of Magic OS has definitely improved, there's still a legacy Huawei feel to the UI here. 
with iOS style icons and folders, a default home screen setup without an app drawer, and familiar weather widgets that haven't really changed in five years or more. Alongside a more modern interpretation of things like weather and calendar that ape the style of the iPhone. There are several handy new features on the Honor side though, including optional larger folders for quicker access to favorite apps, and a swipe up gesture on certain Honor apps that can let you pin widgets to them. Plus, while I generally preferred Samsung's approach to multitasking and windowed app use, Honor's is nothing to sniff at. A windowed app button in the recent apps menu gives you quick access to windowed mode. While you can only have one window open at a time, the rest are handily stacked in this little sidebar for quick access. On the whole then, Honor's software is fine. There are enough helpful features and additions that I appreciate, and the ones that I don't, like the magazine home screen carousel, are easy to disable or ignore. But it's still disappointing to see that despite offering a comprehensive loadout of theming options, Google's Material U wallpaper color theming is still absent from Honor's software. Samsung, on the other hand, offers, I think, a better balance between feature richness, visuals, and compatibility. One UI has been on board with wallpaper color theming for a generation and a half already, with accent colors taken from your backdrop bleeding into the system UI and preloaded Samsung and Google apps. Samsung has a more comprehensive selection of widgets too, and its iOS copycat widgets with their rounded corners also include the useful widget stacking feature that debuted on the iPhone a couple of years back. This generation of One UI has also brought more options to customize the lock screen, again taking inspiration from Apple. And with Samsung's optional good lock feature, there's almost no end to the level of customization and tweaking you can achieve on a modern Galaxy phone like the S23 Ultra. And being a bigger player in the smartphone world, this phone also benefits from Samsung's expansive ecosystem. Whether it's smart home devices or trackers through SmartThings, or it's Galaxy wearables which work best on its own phones. Samsung, of course, has DeX, a full desktop replacement that gives you a Chromebook-style interface on an external display, all run from your handset. And there's even a pretty full-featured automation system run through routines and modes. Both of these are niche features, admittedly, but they go far beyond what's offered on Honor. Samsung also wins with its software update track record. Its Galaxy flagships are supported for four years of OS updates and five of security patches from the date of launch. And the company has typically been very speedy at rolling these out, on occasion even beating Google to the punch. Meanwhile, Honor has improved but still lags behind in terms of length of update support, just three years for OS updates, and how quickly you'll get those updates based on its track record to date. So I'd give the win to Samsung on software, and maybe that's not too surprising, but it just goes to show the length of Samsung's Android pedigree and the sheer investment that it's clearly made in software in recent years. It's really something that has turned out to be a big competitive advantage. Samsung has generally been among the top two Android brands for photography, but in the past year or so, the competition has hotted up considerably. And the Honor Magic 5 Pro is one of the many devices from Chinese brands that brings the heat to the Galaxy. Even this Galaxy, with its enormous four sensor setup. Honor boasts a trio of rear shooters, led by a giant 1 of 1.12 inch unit behind a super bright f of 1.6 lens. That's larger and brighter on paper than Samsung's, and in darker conditions it's 100% competitive with the S23 Ultra. I think I slightly prefer Samsung's color science in this night mode, but both are still really close. In daylight, the difference in color science is also the main thing I've noticed. Honor's shots are a little cooler and just a touch darker than Samsung's without the saturated pop that you typically get from a Galaxy Photo. That's really a matter of personal preference though, and if you do prefer a more vibrant look, then a few taps in any photo editing app will do the trick. And really, I'd be 100% confident in the performance of the main camera from either of these two phones. They're both excellent. The ultra-wide is a similar story. Honor has a slightly wider field of view, not by much, but noticeable if you go pixel peeping, though with those same differences in color reproduction that we saw in shots from the main shooter. Once again, I felt like Samsung was able to capture less flat-looking colors from its ultra-wide, but this is yet another nitpicky difference. Things get a little spicier though when you consider telephoto. Honor has a single periscope telephoto at 3.5 times, again using a 50 megapixel sensor, though this obviously is smaller than the one in the primary. With Samsung, you're packing a 3 times and 10 times, both using the same smaller 10 megapixel sensor that's basically unchanged for the past couple of generations at this point. At around the 3 to 3.5 times mark, it's a really tough call. In a lot of places, I feel like Honor pulls ahead with less visible haloing in certain backlit scenes, points perhaps to a better multi-frame process for HDR shots. Meanwhile, Honor's images also appeared slightly sharper and without the over-sharpening that you sometimes see from telephoto images taken in other phones. Looking at you, Oppo Find X6 Pro. 
The most significant difference I saw at around three times was in low light. Honor was much more prone to switching back to a digital crop from its main sensor compared to Samsung, meaning you may capture a little bit more light, but the overall images appear way grainier. I definitely prefer the output from Samsung in situations like this. And of course, at 10 times, while some of these photos are a little closer than I would have thought, crop in a little and you'll clearly see Samsung captures images with a greater level of fine detail. The Honor camera still does a very respectable job at 10 times, but I think that's about your limit for telephoto in this camera. Samsung, on the other hand, can go all the way to 30 times in good enough lighting and still take a passable photo. Video-wise, both are capable shooters, whether you're taking wide-angle footage or zooming in at three or three and a half times. Overall, though, I think it's a win for Samsung, and that win mainly comes down to the S23's lead in video stabilization. Whether it's due to improved software processing or a better OIS module, I noticed much less juddering in brisk moving shots from the S23 Ultra's camera compared to Honor's. The Magic 5 Pro does a commendable job in the vast majority of lighting conditions, but it's clear when you crop in that Samsung's capturing more detail and it's less prone to jarring bumps in shots where you're walking around. Also, bizarrely, 4K video is limited to 15 minutes at a time on the Honor, which is not going to be a deal breaker for me or I suspect most other people, but it is a bit of a weird restriction to be seeing in a flagship phone in 2023. So should you save £350 and get the Honor Magic 5 Pro over the S23 Ultra? Well, what you miss out on with the Honor is mainly better telephoto performance, a slightly nicer software experience, longer software support, and better video performance. The experience of the Magic 5 Pro isn't horrible in any of these areas, though. This is a much more confident performance from Honor than we saw last year. Unlike the Magic 4 Pro, which struggled a bit with multitasking and thermals and had quite a painfully slow camera system, the Magic 5 Pro is a much more reliable phone across the board, and I couldn't argue with you if you picked it over the S23 Ultra, considering the sizable price gap. For me personally, I would pick the S23 Ultra because of the telephoto and video capabilities. Those are things that are important to me personally in a flagship. But at the same time, I know I'd probably be perfectly happy with the Honor if I had to be, and I still think it's an excellent buy at its launch price. So let me know down in the comments, do you think the Galaxy is worth the extra cash, or has Honor done enough this year to satiate your flagship desires? Subscribe for more comparisons like this if you like this one, but in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.